Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is Trading Simplified. So what are we talking about? Well, I want to talk about the methodology and action. I have a new mystery chart this week. I have an old reveal. I also want to get into the, the downside of trend following and trading in general, and that's the drawdowns. And along those lines, that's going to be in the mind to trade section. And I come across a book that I've read quite a few times called The War of Art, and that'll make a little bit more sense in a few minutes. And I thought it was very timely that I was reintroduced to this book, and I'll explain that in just one second. Uh, it's not about the crypto. I want to continue talking about that. I want to show you a couple of trades that I took this week with the trend-following moron type of methodology. Speaking of trend-following moron, I also have a TFM 10% signal update, which... We were almost at a buy signal just last week, but unfortunately, it did not work. Spoiler alert on that. Housekeeping, I do take requests, as you've seen in recent weeks. If you tell me what you want me to cover, I'll be happy to do it. It makes my job a lot easier, as opposed to trying to read your mind. <laughs> anyway, you can uh, send those requests to DaveLander.com slash contact. If you want the slides from this presentation and all the other presentations combined, you can go to DaveLander.com slash stock charts. I do a weekly webinar, which is still live, and you could bring your favorite stock picks or your stock questions, whatever you want to do. It's a little bit more open, obviously, than, than this particular show. Open-ended in that there's more time there and a little more of a free format. So if you want to bring your questions there, that, that would be great, too. Register even if the link is old or the date is old, which it likely will be. There's my Twitter handle there. All right, let's talk about Mind the trade now along the lines of drawdown right before it went live I, I thought it would also be important to show you that I've been doing this intraday trading experiment and initially as you can see it did really well I did have a little drawdown or a couple little drawdowns in between but for the most part it went pretty much straight up till about uh, recently a month or so ago actually two months ago maybe and you could see that it's begun to roll over since and that is obviously a bit of a bummer and part of that is a reflection of the choppy market and by the way i'm not a huge fan of day trading and i like to call it intraday trading what i'm doing is sort of an intraday trend trading type of thing so this is a bit of an experiment there are a lot of pluses and minuses to the intraday trading and i've been fleshing this out quite a bit in the week in charts and if you want to check that out again go to the week go to the link i mentioned earlier DaveLeonard.com slash webinar. But anyway, the reason I'm bringing it up today is I wanted to show you that I've been going through a drawdown in the intraday stuff. I've also been going through a drawdown in the core methodology. As you can see here, here's the open portfolio. And as you can see, I have three losers in the portfolio at the present time. Now, when I'm in a drawdown, I get a little bummed out, obviously, because I am human. And I'm going to flesh that out in just one second. But the other thing is I also get a little philosophical and I also do a little soul searching. And that's part of the war of art or revisiting that book, digging it out and re-listening to it and rereading it. And in the process of that, I wanted to grab some old slides, a few of which I'll show you now from, from much older week of charts. And I came across this particular slide here and i'm like holy moly and this is a great reminder of why i do what i do and i think if you maybe go back to the older trading simplify shows you might see this spreadsheet somewhere in there but this came from my week of charts and then in this particular example or this snapshot i had one two three four five positions which i was free rolling in and that means that the initial profit target has been taken We've taken partial profits off. In this case, it's 1% of the portfolio. And, and it's a hypothetical $100,000 portfolio. But I do actually take these trades that I recommend. And you can see we've had some, we had some tremendous winners in here. And the mark-to-market -market was over $54,000. And keep in mind, that's working off a 100 k portfolio. So that's pretty impressive, 54% return on that now it doesn't always look like this obviously a lot of times it looks like the portfolio unfortunately that i just showed you but you really have to hang in there and chip away at it and believe me i need my own reminders too and i just thought it was a great thing that 
by accident I stumble across this portfolio. I know, like Miss Jackson says, what have you done for me lately? But this does serve as a reminder as to what's possible. And by the way, and I forget who said it, but it makes a lot of sense. If you are a trend follower, you will spend a lot of your time, possibly the majority of your time, less wealthy. And then, bam, you hit it out of the park and you get a few home runs like this portfolio. And you can see, this is the ultimate goal. These 50% and even 700% gains like this. So it is possible. It just takes time and you really have to be patient and chip away at it. Now, getting back to the war on art, I, I really like these books that have nothing to do with trading, but have everything to do with trading. If Mr. Pressfield gave me permission, I could take this book and almost word for word <laughs> change it into a pretty good trading book. And I would recommend you do read this. And this is, again, one of those books that has nothing to do with trading, but everything to do with trading. And it's a short little book. You could probably read it in one setting. Anyway, the book talks about resistance and how resistance will keep you from doing the right thing. Resistance... Let's say you want to do an exercise regime and you start that, but you soon quit. Well, that's resistance. And, and I've been pretty good over the last couple of years, I'd say, of working out nearly every day. And it's kind of funny. It's like lately the resistance is kind of starting to kick in. It's like each day I, I start going a little bit later and later and I'm justifying it because I'm busy working on some writing or watching the markets or fighting the fires or something early in the morning. And then one of the guys who I kind of barely know in the gym, I just we just kind of say good morning and casually chit-chat a little bit. And I said, yeah, every morning I seem to be coming in a little bit later and later, putting it off. And he goes, yeah, and soon you won't come at all. I'm like, wow, I didn't think he knew me <laughs> well enough to say that. But boy, that really kind of kicked me in the butt. So I need to keep up with that regimen. And even though that... I've been, like I said, I've been working out every day for a couple of years. It, it, it's a constant struggle to get up and go work out. So my point there is exercise makes a good example, diet, of course, a good example of what will elicit resistance. And trading is a huge thing. And, and, and by the way, I also kind of see the life as a trader is more of the life as an artist. And that's something I'm kind of working to flesh out a little bit and I've I've read quite a bit on that a while back and I just can't seem to to put my finger on it if I can't seem to find it I'm just going to put my own thoughts on that but just our, our our lifestyle and the way things work and and we could do a really good job and then not get paid for it and then sometimes we get paid which seems like for nothing we forget about how much work we put in but anyway without before digress too far the life of the trader is a lot like the life of an artist, and that's why I like these books that kind of talk about art, like Mr. Pressfield. Anyway, getting back to the resistance, it's any act that rejects immediate gratification in favor of long-term growth, health, or integrity will elicit resistance. And as I said a few minutes ago, boy, that sure sounds a lot like trading. Any act that rejects immediate gratification I'm sitting here chipping away at it, chipping away at it, chipping away at it. And for the most part, except for a couple things I'm going to show you, I've been losing money lately. And it's really hard because you start feeling like that Einstein's definition of insanity, doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. After a while, it really begins to grate on you. And one thing I was thinking about right as I'm going live is if it wasn't difficult, if trading wasn't difficult then everybody would be doing it. And if everybody would be doing it and it wasn't difficult, then markets would not exist. And it's a little tough, especially when you're going through a drawdown, but you do have to fight the struggle as long as you're following your system and following your plan and making sure you're being selective. And of course, back off a little bit when you're losing money. You don't want to throw good money after bad, but you do have to keep chipping away at it because you never know when that big winner is going to come along. Now, there's a link where you can find this book. I'll get a few cents from Amazon if you click on it. I'd appreciate that. Thank you very much. Now, he begins to define resistance 
And if you think about it, when you're trading, resistance is like you don't take this next trade because you just lost money on the prior three or four or five trades, even though you should take it. Or you might take profits early and then watch the market take off without you. And I could spend the next four hours or maybe four days talking about things that resistance will, will cause you to do. And he explains that resistance cannot be seen, touched, heard, or smelled, but it can be felt. We experience it as an energy field radiating from work and potential. It's a repelling force. It's negative. Its aim is to shove us away, distract us, prevent us from doing the work. Well, he talks a lot about doing the work, sitting down to write, if you're a writer, a paint, if you're an artist, and so on and so forth. As a trader, it means following your plan and doing your homework, even though conditions are less than ideal, or again, you might be in a bit of a drawdown. Now, just a couple little takeaways, and I'll probably add to these over the next week or so, but it's Protean, and I had to look that up, and it, it's based on Greek mythology from Proteus, who was the original shapeshifter. So what he means there is it takes different forms. It kind of reminds me of the Marcellus Wallace speech that was given to Bruce Willis, his character at least, in Pulp Fiction. I've done presentations just on that, so I'll, I'll dig that up too. Now, resistance comes from within. You, you create it. And a lot of times I talk about the fact that there is no fear in the market there's there's no inherent fear in the market and some of that line of reasoning comes from mark douglas now an example i often use about the fact that there is no fear in the market no inherent fear and that's all within is the coco bear market that we had a few years ago i've put the chart up and i asked everyone to raise their hand if this bear market stressed them out and so far nobody's raised their hand now sooner or later I'll find a cocoa trader in a group and he'll raise his hand, I'm sure. However, nobody's raised their hand because they were not an active participant in the market. So the fact that cocoa slid, it didn't stress them out at all. So that fear is within and not in the actual market. And we feed resistance with fear. And that stops us from doing what we need to do. Now... Here's something that was kind of interesting. I like the kind of the tough love that Mr. Pressfield talks about. He says it can never be overcome. You have to live with it. It never goes away. And believe me, and that's one thing that I have a hard time wrapping my head around. I'm going on 30 years of doing this, and I still really get bummed out. I get, like I said earlier, I get a little depressed when things aren't going my way, and I feel like an idiot. And as I often say, you kind of go between feeling like God to a burger flipper, and that kind of happens really, really quickly. In fact, you, you often wonder if you're even worthy of flipping burgers. Now, the live with it thing really dovetails to what he says early on, and this is really key here. The counterfeit innovator is wildly self-confident. The real one is scared to death. Those idiots you see on... YouTube, well, you don't see them anymore because a lot of them are being sued, or one in particular, one group in particular, being sued for $121 million because it turns out they were FOS. But anyway, the the guys in the Lamborghinis with the fake-breasted women riding around and bragging about how easy trading is. And by the way, there used to be one guy, I think he's probably been put out of business, but he had a... a Lamborghini and he had all these toys and he had a $50,000 trading account. So in order to produce those returns, he would probably have to produce hundreds, if not thousands of percent. So you know that he was completely BS. But anyway, I just really dig this right here because we all have highs and lows as traders and that never goes away. It gets easy -er, but it never does get easy. So again, not to beat a dead horse, but the counterfeit innovator is wildly self-confident. The real one is scared to death. Amen, my brother, from another mother. Now, one more thing. The professional is prepared at a deeper level. He is prepared each day to confront his own self 
sabotage. The self-sabotage can be a complete presentation in it of itself. The taking profits early, the not honoring your stop, the list goes on and on. The over-leveraging when you're in a drawdown, trying to come out of the drawdown, and, in, and you end up shooting yourself in the foot. Now, another thing that he said was success will come by itself when it wants to. And that's the hard thing. That open portfolio with 700% gains, I had no idea that was going to be just around the corner. And I have no idea when I'm going to get out of this drawdown. And my wife will often ask me, when are you going to get out of it? I'm like, I don't know. I wish I did. But success will come by itself when it wants to. Now, I'm sure I'll have a lot more to say about that. I just thumbed through, right before I went live, about half of Mr. Pressfield's book. And those were the points that I wanted to get across this week. So I'll follow up with that. In the meantime, I'd recommend you get the book and also listen to the audio. And one thing I like to do is listen to the audio with the book in my hand so I can underline things and make some notes. Anyway, let's shift gears. As I've been saying lately, it's not about the crypto. Markets are markets. Trend following is trend following. The core methodology is the core methodology. And the hybrid money management is the hybrid money management. So here's NEO. If you could see that it broke away nicely from the 30 EMA. And if you go in and watch prior presentations, it was a 230 EMA breakout. And it recently pulled back from that. Now, my entry was a little aggressive. I entered as the trend began to resume. Stop was down here. Initial profit target was up here. And you can see it hit the initial profit target. And there's a trade right there. And when that happens, I flip out half. I put a limit order in place in crypto. In a pair where I'm non-leveraged, I'll put in a 20% initial profit target. In reality, I probably should treat them like I'm treating stocks where I look at the volatility of the market and I place my initial profit targets and protective stops accordingly. Right now in crypto, for the most part, if it's a cash market, I'm using 20%. And so you can see rallied up, hit the initial profit target. And then when that happens, I bring that stop up to break even. Now there is some trailing that's done in between, especially with the core methodology in stocks. But for the most part, just remember that. But the point I want to make today is when you hit that initial profit target, you bring your stop up to break even so you can free roll, so to speak. So this thing continues to run. I will continue to hang on to it and trail that stop higher for hopefully a long, long time. I know you just use the word hope, but at least I have a system in place. Here's another one. You can see same sort of action took off from the 30 EMA. And begin to pull back. Lots of Landry light there. The entry on this one was kind of super aggressive. With the crypto, when they go, they really go. I wouldn't recommend you getting this aggressive in stocks. Sands a rip-roaring bull market. Stop was down here. Initial profit target, as you can see, was hit. When that happens, you take, again, half of the position off. And then you bring that stop up to break even. And if it continues to move in your favor... You ride it for a long, long time. You can see this one's not doing so hot. At least I got a little profit before stopping out or the remainder. So that's a free roll too. So that's just the TFM stuff in crypto. Now let's talk about some mystery charts and the methodology in action in stocks. Here's the mystery chart reveal. This was HUT. We had a nice uptrend followed by a deep pullback. Entry was here. Stop was down here. Initial profit target was up here. Let's take a look at what happened. Well, not too much. Or not too much good, as you can see. It rallied up, triggered us in, and so far has come right back in. I know, it's starting to look like the definition of insanity. So here's a new mystery chart. As you can see, nice uptrend in place, followed by a pullback. Here is the parameters. Entry of 42.90, stop 34.50. Initial profit target of 51.30. So nice uptrend, followed by a pullback, entry here, stop down here, and initial profit target up here. Now waiting for entries, should this stock continue to pull back, will keep us out of trouble. As I've shown quite often, a lot of times 
no capital was put into Horm's way. Now, in the last show that I did, I pointed out that we could get a TFM 10% buy signal. Unfortunately, that signal was thwarted. So this is a chart from last time. This is the 50-week closing high, less 10%. I often refer to it as the buy line, but right here it's named Landry Percent of Close. All you have to do is like this video and click on this little plugin down here, and you get my plugin for free, which gives you these indicators, or as I like to call them, illustrators. And as the market goes on in time, once you have 50 weeks, that is, this line begins to come down. So it takes a while for it to come down, but since we've been in this bear market for so long, this line has begun to drop down. You can see that we were within 10% of that 50-week closing high. Also, we had two bars of Landry Light, and we'll take a look at that here. You can see bar one, the low is greater than the moving average. You can look at the little indicator down below. And bar two, once again, the low is greater than the moving average. And we're also above the buy line. So this would be a buy signal. Unfortunately, that was in the middle of the week. Now, by the end of the week, as you can see, the Landry light disappeared because it dropped below the moving average and it also closed below the buy line. So unfortunately, the signal did not trigger. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is if you're following a system, you need to follow the system. I do look at a lot of other things, but I do like this system as a very simple way to let me know whether or not I should be long or short the overall market. Well, that's my time for this week. As usual, I want to thank everybody for watching. Again, if you would like the slides from this presentation and all the other presentations combined, you can go to davelearner.com slash stock charts. If you need to reach me, davelearner.com slash contact. Again, I want to thank everybody for watching and may the trend be with you. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.